the viral inflammation of ear canal are two types viral inflammation or infection of ear canal are two types that is otitis externa hemorrhagica and herpes zoster oticus otitis externa hemorrhagica otitis externa hemorrhagica and herpes zoster oticus herpes zoster oticus the otitis externa hemorrhagica is characterized by the formation of hemorrhagic bully and the tympanic membrane in deep meatus formation of bully formation of bully on tympanic membrane and deep meatus the formation of bully are formed on the tympanic membrane in deep meatus in the cases of otitis external hemorrhagica they are the viral inflammations of the ear canal they are mostly seen in influenza epidemics they are seen in influenza epidemics influenza epidemics in the influenza epidemics the formation of bully on the tympanic membrane in deep meatus are formed in this condition is called otitis externa hemorrhagica the condition causes severe pain in the ear and blood stain discharge in the bully rupture the blood stain discharge appear when the bully rupture in the bully rupture this the blood stain discharge appear the treatment of the otitis externa hemorrhagica is directed to give the relief from the pain we use analgesic analgesic for pain to relieve the pain in this case we use the analgesic and antibiotic may also be used for the secondary infection of the ear canal if the infection are secondary we use the antibiotic antibiotic for the secondary infection for the secondary infection we use the antibiotic The second number of viral inflammation of the ear canal is the herpes zoster oticus. The herpes zoster oticus is the formation of vesicle on the tympanic membrane, meatal skin, concha, and post auricular groove may be involved. There is the formation of vesicle. Formation of vesicle on the tympanic membrane, meatal skin. conca and post auricular growth the seventh and eighth nerve may be involved in the herpes zoster oticus the drug treatment is insects to relieve the pain in ear toilet to clean the ear and antibiotic if there is the secondary infection and these vesicles must be removed the malignant otitis externa is the inflammation of the ear canal caused by the bacteria called pseudomonas infection and the elderly diabetic patient caused by the pseudomonas infection and elderly diabetic patient in the elderly diabetic patient these pseudomonas 
cause the infection and they cause the malignant otitis externa. They also be caused in the immunosuppressed drugs. In the immunosuppression patient, the, these malignant otitis externa may also occur due to immunosuppressive drug. Due to immunosuppressive drugs because the immune system of the patient is suppressed and there is the chances for the pseudomonas bacteria to cause the malignant otitis externa. They resemble the diffused otitis externa but there is excruciating pain and appearance of granulation in the ear canal. There is appearance of granulation. Granulation appear in the canal that differentiate the diffuse otitis externa and the malignant otitis externa in case of the malignant otitis externa the granulation appear in the canal and there is excruciating pain facial paralysis is common there is also the facial nerve paralysis in cases of the malignant otitis externa the infection may spread to the skull base and jugular foramen causing multiple cranial nerve palsy the infection may spread to the skull and they also cause multiple multiple cranial nerve palsy cranial nerve palsy also occur in cases of the malignant otitis externa the infection of the malignant otitis externa can also spread to the temporomandibular fossa posteriorly to the mastoid and medially into the middle ear and petrous bone the infection can also spread to the temporomandibular fossa can also spread into the tip uh, temporomandibular fossa and they also spread into the petrous bone also spread into the petrous bone the diagnosis of the malignant otitis externa there is severe otalgia in the elderly diabetic patient the patient is diabetic and in this diabetic patient, there is severe otalgia or earache. Otalgia. Otalgia means earache and with the appearance of granulation tissue in the external canal, there is appearance of granulation tissue tissue in the ear canal. This granulation tissue seen on the otoscope and there is the diagnosis of the malignant otitis externa with the appearance of the granulation tissue in the ear canal and the patient is diabetic and severe otalgia. Otalgia in the diabetic patient. The CT scan may show bone destruction but it is often not helpful. The gallium 67 is more useful in the diagnosis and follow up of the patient. Gallium 67 is more useful in the diagnosis. More useful in the diagnosis of the malignant otitis externa in the elderly diabetic patient. It is taken up by monocyte and reticuloendothelial cells and indicative of the soft tissue infection there is the monocyte and reticuloendothelial cells and these endothelial cells there is the monocyte monocyte and reticuloendothelial cells these indicate infection these indicate infection on the gallium 67 
Legilium. Legilium. 67 can be repeated every the gallium 67 can be repeated every three month the sorry every three weeks to monitor the disease every three weeks to monitor the disease for monitoring the gallium 67 is repeated every three weeks for monitoring the diseases the treatment for the malignant otitis externa is the con control of diabetic that is control of diabetic we control the diabetic or the glucose level of the patient and there is maybe the toilet of ear canal is also essential toilet of ear canal we clean the ear and the these granulation tissues can be removed from the ear and discharge should be removed and granulation or any dead tissue are removed. The antibiotic treatment against organism in most ear is Pseudomonas aeruginosa, the antibiotic against Pseudomonas aeruginosa, the antibiotic against Pseudomonas aeruginosa must be taken. Uh, in the antibiotic we use mainly the third generation cephalosporin. The third generation cephalosporin. Cephalosporin that is called the ceftriaxone intravenously or ceftazidine. Ceftazidine. One to two gram per day one to two gram per day must be administered in the case of the malignant otitis externa the fluoro the quinolones are also useful the quinolone that is cyprofloxacin ofloxacin and other fluxacin are or that is leufloxacin also effective they can be given orally are intravenously that is ciprofloxacin infusion ciprofloxacin ofloxacin that is orally and leofloxacin that can be used these quinolone can also be combined with the rifampin the rifampin and these quinolone can also be combined. In the cases of the combination, ciprofloxacin 750 mg OD orally can be used and rifampicin can also be effective. The rifampicin can also be effective in cases of combination with the quinolone that is ciprofloxacin, ofloxacin, leofloxacin. The other drug that is called gentamicin and other mycin, they can be given intravenously but they are autotoxic and nephrotoxic so we does not use as the first drug of choice. If the patient cannot respond to this drug, culture and sensitivity air discharge should guide the surgeon. Culture and sensitivity discharge guide the surgeon. There must be test for culture and sensitivity prolonged antibiotic treatment has replaced radical surgery and resection done earlier for this condition